praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't we pray? Invite the Lord's presence into the service. And, uh, not going to uh, be lengthy tonight. But we do want to share the Word of God with us. Amen. 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 God knows every need. Amen. Yes, He's that's right. to pray for Joanne and Jesse and them. And, and um, there's people we we listened to a nurse this afternoon that somebody sent us. And very, very, very sobering. Very, very enlightening <coughs> and, and troubling. And, right. And uh, there's a lot of suffering, seriously suffering people in the world today. Yes. Yeah. And, we need to pray for him mm -hmm. because except for the grace of God, it can be us. That's right. And uh, I, yeah. I know I want to, to preach in, in such a way that the sinner will be saved. And I believe that's a great need. But I, I believe we need to try to minister in such a way that that one that's suffering can be comforted as well. Yes, amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you today and we invite you into the service. We thank you, Lord, that you abide within our hearts and in our lives, Lord. Oh, you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother, Lord. I pray, God, that we would be mindful of you, Lord, in everything we think, say, and do. Help us, God, not to be lost here. Oh, 
you know, since she's been there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's the time for the church to pray. Yes, yes that's it's right. It's the time for us to really, really, really get serious. Mm -hmm. And people, good intending people, mm -hmm. will distract you from praying. I called my sister this week and haven't called her in probably two or three months. And uh, uh, I could tell she had been crying. And I said, what were you doing? She said, well, I was praying, Bubba. And uh, I thought, why couldn't I have prayed or called her 15 minutes earlier or 15 minutes later or 30 minutes earlier or 30 minutes later? Yeah. But thank God he laid upon her heart to pray That's and right. to cry out to God. And I'm Amen. telling you, the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous yes, man availeth much. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. If you want to read along with me tonight, I want to uh, read different scriptures. <clears throat> In Isaiah 40 and 31, I'll just quote that right fast if you want to be turning to 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Right. Amen. And, uh, you know, we need a revival in our own heart and life. I need revival. You need revival. We right. all need revival. Yes. And revival comes on the wings of prayer. That's right. Amen. Revival comes as we seek the Lord and draw near to the Lord with a whole and a fervent heart. In 2 Corinthians 1 and 8, God is a God of deliverance. And God delivers us. Amen. That is, a, you know, revival is a coming back to life. Yes. Uh, doing the first works over again. It's, it's a time of refreshing. Uh, God didn't plan for us to have revival as far as just the evangelists come and we get prayed through and then we get comfortable and and go by the wayside and just go through the motions and, right. and greet one another. And then next year when the evangelist comes, we get prayed through again. Uh, that that's, that's feelings. That's emotional. That's yeah. flesh. That's carnality. That's not what God's plan for the church is. That's right. The church is to be a vibrant body of Christ. The hands of the Lord extended yes, right. to a lost and dying world. That's right. Amen. And uh, meeting the needs of those that uh, we come in contact with. And uh, we are told to awake. Thou that sleepest awake. And uh, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give thee light in Ephesians 5 and 14. But verse 8 of the first chapter of 2 Corinthians says, For we would not, brethren, have you to have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He's going to deliver us more and more and more. Amen. How many times and how many ways is he going to deliver us? How many times and ways that it's necessary right. that we cry out to him, that we're in need and we're despairing? That's what we are going to do, we're going to in those times cry out unto the Lord and when we cry out to the Lord God meets us there yes. and ministers to our need. Yes. We need revival to break up the fallow ground of our heart. Right. You right. know when we find ourselves becoming uh, complacent and becoming stagnant and, and coming to the place to where we're untouched. Right. Uh, you know I, I have listened to a lot of messages and I went back and listened to portions of scripture today of different preachers and different people uh, not necessarily seeking God for a direction tonight but available and willing but uh, I, I was so amazed at the different heart and countenances of how people are being affected in different ways by this you know what is determining that mm -hmm. well I know one church uh, the lady that got up to sing. She's a nurse just before being a doctor, I think. And she's very precious. Right. And only God knows what she's seeing. 
and what she's dealing with on a daily basis. And you know, you, you either get calloused yeah. or you get broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look at people and watch people suffer, I, it was a horrible feeling to watch my mother. Uh, my wife, Sister Kim, was so strong and uh, uh, she would pray with her and, and she would deal with her, uh, you know, day in and day out. And my kids, they were just precious and, and everything. But I felt so helpless. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would pray, but she didn't know it. But I'd just come to the church from praying. And she said, son, pray for mother. Well, I've just been praying. And praying and praying and praying. Yes, sir. And it seemed like nothing was happening. Right. But I'm telling you, our prayers were being heard. Yes, That's they right. were. Yes, Amen. Sir. And God is the only one that can open the windows of heaven and help us and touch us and strengthen us and encourage us. And we need to look to him. Amen. For our help. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal, in mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. He was not talking about uh, the death to where the heart pump quits beating. Uh -huh. He was talking about the death to where it was, it was suffering. Day after day after day, it was shipwreck. Yes. It was storm. Mm -hmm. It was whipping. It was prison and bondage. Right. It was despairing, even of our life. Yes. He said, we're knocked down, but we're not knocked down. What did he yeah. mean by yeah. that? I keep going to the Lord and being replenished in the spiritual man day after day after day. And that's what you have to do in life. If you're going to keep the victory, when somebody does something or somebody says something hard or harsh to you, you must pray that through. Right. You cannot go to bed, amen, with that anger or with that frustration or that fear brewing in your heart and life. Yes, sir. Uh, but you've got to take it to the Lord. Yes, You've right. got to realize the grace of God as it comes and makes himself available to us and thank him and rejoice for it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because God is in control and he's trying to make us stronger in him. Amen. He's Amen. trying to give us strength yes. by his spirit mm -hmm. in our inner man. Mm -hmm. That's the real us, is our inner man. What are you on the inside? Yes, amen. What are your thoughts? You can, anybody can smile at people and pretend like everything's okay. Right. But are you falling apart on the inside? Are you really and truly trusting the Lord? Are you really and truly looking to the hills, amen, and the Lord from whence comes your help? Are you looking to God? Are you waiting upon God? Right. Are you resting in the Lord and believing that God is going to deliver us from these, from these trials? Or are you allowing your heart to, to not be plowed? Mm. Your ground to get harder and harder and harder. Jesus, Jesus. The heart and the soul of your being becoming more and more calloused. Because it seems like God has even disappointed you. Mm. You don't understand. And faith is having a hard time reaching out to the Lord and trusting Him. But I admonish you to find scripture, find words in the scripture, whether it be uh, Psalm 51, when, you, when you've fallen short and, and you need to repent before the Lord, or whether it be Psalm 91, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, or, or whatever it is that you need to pray, waiting upon the Lord. Yes. yes Amen. Right. Let your strength be renewed in the Lord. I'm telling you, a teacher that loses the heart for the students that they're trying to help and minister to is not worth their salt. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're not, they don't really even have the ability to teach anymore. Mm -hmm. The preacher that's just preaching and, and living every day frustrated with the laity and mm -hmm. frustrated with this one that's unfaithful and that one that's unfaithful. I mean, there's people that are not really putting forth the effort, amen, that, that, I, that I see is necessary. Right. For them to grow in God and be stronger in the Lord. What are you doing? I'm telling you, we need to look to the Lord. Yes. We need to look to the Lord. 
When we think about them, we don't need to be angry toward them, but we need to pray for them. We need to ask God to help them and to minister to them, to stir up the gift that is within them, to stir up their heart. Amen. Right. And let them pray to the point to where they pray through, to the point to where once again they pray through to the Holy Ghost and that sweet liberty. They pray through to the sweet tears. Amen. Begin to uh, fall down their cheeks and they begin to love the Lord and they begin to feel God's love and God's comfort and God's peace. What are they doing? They're reaching out to the Lord. Right. When it seems like he's not attainable, we need to realize he's there. He, he, yes, he, that's he, right. he may look like he's not there, but He's there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Yes, amen. I'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When we get married, we uh, don't have to go very long until the honeymoon is awakened mm -hmm. by a disappointment, by an argument, or by something that was unexpected that catches us off guard and, yes. and by surprise. Yeah, right. And how we handle that situation is going to determine, it's going to determine what we are in the tomorrows of right. life. That's yes. right. When we come to church, we say, well, see, I just, I'd get in church and I'd have a good time and I'd be all right, but sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so just get on my nerves. <laughs> Right. Well, you can't find a perfect church down here. No, That's sir. right. The churches down here, they're going to have wood, hay, and stubble in them. Yeah. yeah. The seeds that come forth from the sower, the word of God, I mean, some of them are going to fall upon stony ground. Yes. They're not going to have much depth of earth, and they're going to spring up and sprout up and, and look good for a while, but after persecution comes, after... They feel forsaken after they don't understand. By and by, they begin to be wounded and they're tempted to throw in the towel and give up. I admonish you, this is not a time to give up. This is a time right. to be not weary and well-doing. But in due season, we would need to realize we're going to renew our strength. In due season, we're going to reap if we faint not. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm sure that... that uh, uh, people are encountering things that they've never encountered before, but they can still see revival. Yes. Amen. How are they going to see revival by seeing the, the the revival supplier? Jesus, when he came to the earth, I mean, uh, the Father and the Holy Ghost and Jesus got together and they planned and they were going to come and they were going to create man and they were going to breathe into man life and he became a living being a living soul and Jesus came in the incarnate son of God and came and took on flesh and after John the Baptist baptized him in the Jordan the first thing he did was the Bible says the spirit driveth him into the wilderness right why did he drive him into the wilderness to be tempted yes how was he tempted in all points like as we are right yes yet without sin he was tempted the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. He was tempted. Right. And we need to allow the Spirit of God to deal with our heart. We need to allow God to expose the lust of the flesh in us if it's there. Yeah. Yeah. We need to allow God to, to expose the pride of life if it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to allow God to expose fear and anger and worry and, and, and a, a carnal appetite. Whatever would, would lead us and pull us away from God. We need to let God show us that. That's right. right. Amen. And we need to be willing for God's will to be done and accomplished in us. Right. And not our will. Amen. We need to be faithful to God with our giving. Give is given unto the Lord. Amen. With thankfulness of heart. Give. If you look around and see somebody in the need. I'm telling you, you're not going to see anybody all that all hardly ever that looks perfect. Mm -mm. You're not going to see anybody that you're ever, the thought comes on your mind to give them and help them out. But what the thought don't go through your mind, they could possibly go buy liquor or they could possibly yeah. do this or they could be depositing right. $20,000 a week in the bank living off of what you're scraping and scraping to get by with. Yeah. But you need to strive. Covet earnestly the best gifts. 
Seek to be led by the Spirit of God. Seek that God would give you your first love all over again. Let God bless you more and more and more. See, we need revival. We need revival. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. Amen. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They're yeah. temporary. Yeah. They're going to pass away. That's right. Everything that we can see is temporary. We're going to have a new body one day. We're going to see the Lord as he is. The Bible says, for we shall be like him. Well, what is that? I don't know. I've never experienced it. But I can get a glimpse of it. He walked through the walls. Amen. Yes. He opened the gates of the keepers there. Amen. Right. And, and Paul and Silas said, do thyself no hurt. We're here safe. Yeah. Amen. His concern was for others' needs That's that, right. made, that they might be met. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah. Amen. We need to be faithful in our giving, whether we're at church or not. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if you just jump on the bandwagon that says, oh, he's begging for money. If you do that, let me tell you something. You need to give more than we need to receive. Yeah. Yes. Because what we receive is not so much what we receive from man that sustains us and keeps us going. It's what we receive from God. Amen. Yeah. Right. That's what sustains us and keeps us going. I remember here last year, or year before last, the church was struggling and going through some things and and uh, I really felt like that that it was a time that I knew what to do. It was a time when the flesh said, uh, tighten up the belt and, and don't be so much giving right now, but, but just hold on, not to hoard, not to just store in our coffers, but to just use wise and be a good steward. Use wisdom. Be a good steward, amen, and make sure you got enough to pay the bills and everything. But let me tell you, in lean times, sometimes... You know, the charismatics say, send me your money and I'll send you your billfold. That'll never go empty. We don't believe in all that garbage. That's right. But we do believe in the scripture that says, give and it shall be given unto you. That's right. We do believe in that. Why? Right. Because that's what God's word says. Yeah. Why? Because we practice it in our own life. Yeah. There have been times that I help people and bless people with just as much, little or as much as $20. And there have been times that I did that and God really blessed me. There have been times that I did that and it was a great blessing to the one that I was seeking and endeavoring to bless. And there have been times I gave a man $20 one time. Amen. We went to the coffee shop and sat down and I listened to him. And I was concerned about him and for him and, and everything. And I gave him $20 and our relationship was never the same after that. That man did not realize that we were just barely, barely, barely keeping the lights on at the church. That man didn't realize what we were going through. But he was so caught up in himself. Yeah. That man has struggled over the years. I've prayed for people and prayed for people the last two weeks that don't even hardly ever come to church. Right. Why? Because God brought them to my mind. Well, why do you spend so much time praying for them when you've got sheep to care for? Well, because God brought them to my mind. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Because I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to do. And you do what the Lord wants you to do right. to the best of your ability. We need to be faithful and be doers of the word and not hearers only. We can all shake our heads and say amen and yes and seem like everything's okay. And be thinking about the cake and ice cream or be thinking about yes, the roast and gravy. Or be thinking about after church what we're going to do and how we're going to have a good time. Right. But let me tell you, if you belong to the Lord, when his heart is touched, your heart needs to be touched. Yes. That is revival. That brings revival. 
That brings the joy of the Lord. That brings strength. That brings about the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance. That brings along what pleases the Lord. Yes. When somebody's hurting, God hurts. Mm -hmm. He's touched with the fears of our infirmities. We need revival so we can mount up with wings and eagles. Yes. So That's we can right. run and not be weary. So we can walk and not faint. Amen. For this cause we faint not. Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I think about that nurse, how she was sobbing and how she was crying. She felt so helpless. But she was there singing to the ones she could sing to. She was there praying and crying with the ones that she could pray and cry with. I'm sure the devil was telling her that she's possibly going to get the virus. I'm sure she's got a family, a mom and dad, perhaps a husband, and maybe even kids at home. I'm sure there's things that would distract and hinder her from giving or doing more. But she's doing what she could. Amen. She's doing what she could. Remember the, the lady that is not of our faith and our organization, but she was down there in that ditch with the lepers. And that reporter told her, Ma'am, I wouldn't do that for all the money in the world. And she said, neither would I. Yes. I'm not doing it for money. Right. I'm not doing it for all the money in the world. I'm doing it because God has put a love within my heart yeah. right. for these people. Yeah. Amen. And I'm telling you, God does all things well. And we need to seek and endeavor. The Bible says, covet earnestly the best gifts. Yes. Right. This is a time for us to be doing some self-examination. For us to be asking God, Lord, why are you not doing more through me? God, what can I do differently? What can I do that can enhance your kingdom, that can glorify you? God, that can be a blessing to somebody. Right? Yes. There's people that's been on my heart for the last week, week and a half. And I've not called them. I've not gone by. And I mean, they're right here within a block away. Why? Because distractions. Because, well, it's not convenient. Because, well, they'll think I got some ulterior motive. Because, quit the becauses. Yes. And obey God. Amen. Obey God. That's right. Be a blessing. Don't go to the Lord. Amen. With all of your pomp and your pride. But go to the Lord with brokenness. God breaking up the fallow ground of your heart. Yes. Don't go to work with all of your abilities and talents and what you can do. I can handle this. But you go to the Lord and you go to work realizing that, God, I don't know how to do anything without you. I've got to have your touch and your strength. I don't know who needs you the most. But you can help me to know. Amen. Yeah. You can strengthen me. You can help me and make me effective. Amen. And help that each heart will be touched because of my desire to let you flow through me. Amen? Yes, amen. 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 I just admonish you to realize our president has said this is going to be a week that is very, very alarming. It's going to be a week that we're going to see numbers really rise. And, and I don't know what they know that we don't know. They've watched the graphs and the studies and everything, but I'm telling you, as people are troubled, as people with the virus are troubled, we need to realize there's people at home that may not have the virus right. that are troubled as well. Yes. And we need to pray for them literally. If God takes it and deems it necessary, give them a foxhole experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let them come to the place to work. Say, God, if you will, I will. Yes. Right. Lord, if you will, you can heal me mm -hmm. of my leprosy. Yes, sir. Jesus said, if thou canst believe. Yes. We got our if in the wrong place. We're putting our if on if God will. God's already made the provision for most every need that we have. Right. All we got to do is look to him. Yes. He's our help. 
He's our strength. He's the one. I said a service or two or three ago, he's the one that holds our breath. Yes, sir. Amen. That nurse expressed how that the lungs of these patients were. <laughs> they just can't get any air. God can breathe air into them. Yes, yes that's right. God can smite infection. God can heal. But we need to trust him and love him. Yes, amen. And we need to believe that he's going to do it his way for his glory. And if God don't do it the way you want in your life and in your circumstance, in your loved one, don't ever get bitter at God. Yes, amen. But amen. cry out to him and That's say, Lord, help me yes, to trust you. Amen. Help me not to be hurt at you. I remember one time in my own life, our church people, have heard me say this. I, we had pastored for almost nine years and we left the church and and um, just seemed like I couldn't pray it through like I needed to anymore. And I just was so discouraged. But instead of waiting upon the Lord and mounting up with wings as eagles, I thought it was best to just make a change. And I'm telling you, I was a little hurt at God. But, you know, it might be that God was a little hurt at me. Right. And God help us when God has hurt at us for us to realize his love is not diminished at all. Yes. Yeah. He may be disappointed, but his disappointment is because he's seen something greater in our potential in us than what we saw. Yes. He wanted to do more than what we, the vision that we had that he was able to do through. And I'm telling you, that's where it's at in your life. Most everybody that listens to this message tonight in any part of it, God's plans for you are greater than what your plans for yourself are. Amen. And you need to just give your plans over to the Lord and say, not my will, but thy will be done. Why don't we sing that tonight in closing tonight? Amen. Not my will, but thine be done. And that the fullness of the Son might dwell within this heart that I have given thee. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, okay, let's see. Amen. Worship God. Love Him. Raise your hands and your hearts to the Lord. Close your eyes if you feel like it. Just seek to draw near to God.
belong in your heart. Yes, amen. Amen. Let God know that you love him and you're praising him and you're adoring him. Amen. The best you know how. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. Have a great day.